Reverend Barber, let me ask you about the big picture here in terms of tactics, in terms of moving people. Uh, your history in North Carolina in particular, but also the national reach of what you did, what you started in North Carolina with you and the coalition that you built there, um, I think reignited for a lot of people the idea that direct action works, the idea that when you run up against political power, concerted political power and special interests that are standing against you, one of the ways around it is not just by building similar political power to compete and in, in, within, within the formal electoral system, but putting boots on the street, putting people on the ground in a way that calls out to the conscience of anybody who sees what they're doing. How do you see direct action working and what feels like an impasse right now on this issue? Well, for direct action to work, first of all, it must be a moral fusion direct action. It can't just be something you do one day. It's got, and it's got to be broad. It's got to be deep. It has to con uh, all people. But then you have to have that a legal strategy. And then you have to have a legislative strategy. And then you have to have a way of framing issues in a moral form that allows people to see their connections. And then the Poor People's Campaign, a national call for moral revival. And it was the Texas Poor People's Campaign that invited us to Texas. They said, look, in Texas, we got 13 million poor and low wealth people in the state, 5 million people who uh, don't make uh, a living wage. In Texas, it requires 101 hours of work a week if you work 725 at a minimum wage. We have to find a way to bring all of those people together and help them understand that the same forces that promote systemic racism and, 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 and push poverty and ecological devastation, denial of health care and the war economy and the false moral narrative of religious nationalists are the same people. And if they are cynical enough to be together, we have to be smart enough to come together and we have to stay there long enough. You know, Moral Monday in North Carolina went on for three years. Plus, we fought a court battle for four years. But we also have to say in this moment, states cannot do this uh, uh, by themselves. We have to have federal legislation. If we don't get this for the People's Act, then that means you are for the U.S. Chamber of Commerce over the U.S. United States Constitution. You want dark money over public money. You want to end same-day registration, early voting, and opportunity to vote. And what you want is a narrow opportunity for uh, narrowing the opportunities for people to vote. And the st we can't do this state by state. We need federal legislation. We also can't have people saying, well, let's just get the Voting Rights Act. No, that protects you after the fact or, before, or in pre-clearance before the fact. In order to deal with what's happening right now, we have to have the For the People's Act. But when you mobilize, Rachel, you have to connect the dots. And too often what happens is we get black people over here and white people over here and brown people over here and Latino people over here. And that silos are important sometimes. But in this moment, when we're talking about these kinds of attacks on our democracy, we have to have a coming together. And that's what you're going to see. In fact, on the stage on, uh, on the 31st, the only people that are going to speak are poor and low income, impacted people, moral leaders and, and activists. That's who's going to be talking to the nation that day. The Reverend Dr. William Barber, president of Repairs of the Breach and the co-chair of the Poor People's Campaign, Beto O'Rourke, former Democratic congressman from Texas, the founder of Powered by People. Gentlemen, thank you for helping us understand this tonight. The march that they're announcing will be held July 27th through July 30th. It starts in Georgetown, Texas. It ends in Austin, Texas. They're describing it as a Selma to Montgomery style march. It is a 27 mile march from Georgetown to Austin. They're going to do that over the course of those four days. And then the day after that, July 31st, a rally at the the Austin State Capitol, all designed to nationalize the voting rights fight in Texas for federal voting backstop protections.